Hey folks, Ariel over here. Not right at finest, but close. Where today we are foraging, probably the last foraging video, ow, for the uh, gear because I expect it to be snowing here anytime. Um, and what we are picking today is a somewhat prickly topic. These are rose hips. That is the fruit of a rose. They look a little bit like a miniature apple, kind of like a crab apple. Roses and apples are in the same family of plants. Um, they're also prickly. <laughs> These are wild, so they're somewhat small. If you have a cultivated rose, the hips will often tend to be much larger. Oh boy. The, the, the larger ones tend to be a lot more mild and not nearly as concentrated in either their flavor or their uh, benefits. So these are just wild ones. There's quite a few patches around my house that grow pretty prolifically. And it is often recommended that you wait to harvest them till after the first frost. The first frost is a rather meaningless term in my area where frost is just what happens all the time, um, but it, it is certainly frosted multiple times on these, for sure. But roses grow wild of uh, various kinds across, I think, pretty much the whole country, uh, unless they really don't like very warm areas in the south. I've never spent time there, so maybe somebody who has can, can answer that. Do rose bushes grow wild? in very warm areas, I'm not sure, but for sure anywhere very cold, they do. Ouch. Um, and yeah, I could wear gloves, but most of the prickling happens to my legs, for one, as I try to <laughs> crawl through the bushes. And two, my fingers lose so much of their dexterity with gloves that I can't pick most of the berries. So, now I've got my bucket of rose hips that I've picked here, and we're going to dry them. And like most other things that I've ever dried or dehydrated, those are basically synonyms, um, what you do to, to let them dry is just going to vary a little bit depending on where you are. I'm simply going to let them lay here in this pan to dry out because I have a very, very dry climate, and especially indoors at this time of year with the wood stove going for at least part of the day the air is extremely dry. So they're going to just dehydrate laying here. If you don't have such a dry area, um, hot attics, uh, back windows of cars, actual formal dehydrators, um, very low temperature, like just a pilot light if you're fortunate enough to, to have a propane oven, um, will dehydrate things quite nicely. So lots of options uh, for how to let them dry out. But, this is just, like I said, this is the fruit of a, a rose, and these all just grew wild. I'm just kind of picking through and making sure I don't have too many leaves and twigs in here. Um, and the reason, why would I want to take all this time to pick little red fruits off a prickly plant? Well, because, for one, these are super high in vitamin C. Uh, compared to, like, oranges, which is one of the things foods typically thought of as being high in vitamin C, oranges have about... Uh, 50 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams of fruit. Uh, to contrast that, rose hips have 2,000 uh, milligrams per 100 grams. So that is very high in vitamin C. They're higher than goji berries. They're higher than a whole lot of the things that we think of as being very beneficial for their uh, nutrition content. They also happen to grow in my area, while oranges clearly do not. So that's a huge benefit. Not that I won't ever buy an orange at the grocery store, but this is something growing right outside 
my house and uh, for free. So I definitely want to make use of it. And they're also high in, like most other red colored things, they're very high in lycopene. Uh, they've been used uh, over centuries both for their lovely flavor. Some people will make uh, jelly with them, like squeeze the juice out and, and make a jelly. Uh, some people will make like a rosehip syrup. I don't usually do either of those things. I use them mostly in making uh, herbal teas. It's just, they have a really nice kind of fruity flavor that I like to add. You can even do it by yourself, but I often do a mixture of different um, flavors together when I'm when I'm brewing some tea. So those are going to dry out and let me show you what they look like once they're dry. So here's the last little bit that I have left from the year before. That's crushed up once they are dehydrated and you can see there's seeds and everything in there. Now the seeds inside this rose hip, let me just cut one in half and show you. Let's find a big one so it's a little easier to see. It looks a little bit like an apple core on the inside. Here you can see what the inside of it looks like with the little seeds. There's kind of some hairy fibers right around those seeds. And if you're going to use this for making jelly or jam or something like that, where you're going to eat the whole fruit, most people recommend taking those seeds out because those hairs can be kind of irritating to the inside of your mouth. Um, since I don't usually do that, I don't bother. This is one of the reasons I mostly use them for making tea because it's simply the easiest way to do it. Um, and once dried and just crushed up in there, the seeds are really high in vitamin E. I just put a scoop of this in with whatever I'm making my tea flavor out of and I've never had any problem with that being irritating to my mouth. Um, maybe experiment with a small amount in case it is to you, but I don't think it usually is when people are making tea for it from them. Anyway, that's probably, like I said, the last uh, foraging thing that you will see around here for this year. Um, that's kind of the fall, tail end of fall harvest after multiple hard freezes, but this pan's gonna just sit here and dehydrate over a couple days, and then once they're all dry and there's no moisture left, I'll just put them in a jar like those others and use them for teas. This tea is also uh, generally considered to be beneficial for things like arthritis, uh, various joint pains, uh, it helps fight inflammation, which can be just about anything from a, a cold to cancer. Um, you know, anything that can help boost your immune system is helpful with your body being able to take care of things for itself. And the flavor is just really rich. I wouldn't call it apple-like, but it's just a rich kind of fruity taste. It's very pleasant. Some medicinal type herbs and such are good for you, but don't really taste that awesome. Rose hips really taste very delicious. So if you have some growing wild in your area, um, go harvest some after a frost so they're nice and juicy. And you can see there as I was picking them, when they're ripe, they're fully ripe, they should just kind of pop off the end of the stem. If you got to really pull or cut them, then they're not ripe yet. Um, but maybe try harvesting some and dry a few and see if you like the flavor of the tea. And again, if you have cultivated ones, as long as they haven't been sprayed with something toxic, uh, you can eat them too. They're bigger, so you get more faster, but they're not as concentrated. Both the flavor is milder and there's less of all the medicinal benefits and the, the vitamin C and so on. So you just need more, but that can be somewhat easier to do because they're bigger. So hopefully that inspires someone else to go try some rosehip tea. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.